Hi, Dave Manzer here with PR Over Coffee, and welcome to our first ever Food Writers Roundup, where we're featuring three food writers in the Austin area, and we're very excited to have Marla Camp, who's the publisher of Edible Austin, Patricia Sharp, who's the executive editor and food writer for Texas Monthly, and Addie Broyles, who's the food writer and blogger for Austin American Statesman. So we're really excited that you're here, and we hope you enjoy the video that we have prepared for you. And also, if you want to attend a future PR Over Coffee event, please go to our website at www.provercoffee.com, or you can go to our meetup page at meetup.com backslash Coffee Austin. And thank you very much, and hope you enjoy PR Over Coffee. But I wasn't Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Dave Manzer, and welcome to PR Over Coffee. Just out of curiosity, can I see a show of hands? How many of you have never been here before? It's the first time. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, you know, I, I thought we were really onto something when we did a technology focused PR Over Coffee, uh, and we had about 40 people show up, but I think there's over 55 people here. So it really tells me what really and truly counts in Austin is food. <laughs> Not yeah. technology, you know, it's, it's all about food. Good eating, yeah. good food. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons, obviously, why I wanted to uh, have this event about food is, one, we're blessed from a uh, um, just, you know, culinary uh, uh, standpoint. We have great food writers with, uh, you know, just a fantastic uh, resume of writing experience. We have a lot of avant-garde food entrepreneurs. Uh, it seems like the the um, the tech startup fever has has also hit the food industry. So you know, I just feel like something special is really happening here in Austin. And you know, I thought it was worth spending some time at a PR for coffee, uh, talking with small business entrepreneurs, uh, other food writers, PR folks. Uh, foodies in general about uh, what is so special of, and that's happening here in Austin and who better to help talk about that than you know these three great food writers uh, that we have up here. Uh, so without further ado I'm going to kick everything off and uh, just thank the, the uh, Art Institute of Austin and their culinary school for allowing us to be here today. Uh, really thank you very much. Uh, Jane Nichols, you were fabulous. Uh, and uh, we were supposed to be get our 15 minutes of fame this morning on Fox News, but then this big weather thing happened, and you know, Carrie Bellicosa was off at Shoal Creek filming the flooding, and so I got a 650 call while I was in the shower this morning. I'm like, can't do it. <laughs> so uh, thank you for your flexibility, and we are running a little bit behind simply because I, I think the weather had a little bit to do with that. By the way, I. I think Pierre Coffee is slightly jinxed. The last time there was a weather event was our Pierre Coffee in November. So, you know, I'm, I'm debating whether we're just going to cancel uh, going forward. Um, so, uh, I wanted to let you know that if you are uh, social media inclined, we do have our uh, our profile at Pierre Coffee. So, we encourage you to follow us. And if you wanted to tweet about this event, we'd love it. Our hashtag is Pierre Coffee. And then we also have Facebook. Uh, Facebook Pierre Over Coffee and Facebook My Local Reporter. It's another, uh, it's a search database for those interested in, in finding out the names of reporters in Austin that cover restaurant and food or uh, health and fitness or technology, you name it. We have everything searchable here in Austin at the community level. We also cover Houston, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, and San Antonio. Uh, and I wanted to thank our espresso sponsors. We get cutesy with our sponsor name, sorry. <laughs> Um, Bank of America, this is the second time that they have sponsored us, and uh, wanted to call attention to uh, Eva, where are you? You're, would you back. like just to introduce yourself? Absolutely. I'm Eva Carr with Business Banking for Bank of America, and I am very humbled to be here with so many brave souls who are either on their own already or um, are representing wonderful small businesses in the community, so thank you. And, and she represents a division that's focused exclusively on small business entrepreneurs like us. Uh, also, we have Axion Texas. Uh, I love this organization. I could, I could talk quite a bit about it, but I'm going to let you, uh, Asal or Roxana, stand up and do that. Uh, so if one of you wants to introduce yourself. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Roxana. I, am, uh, I direct the Women's Business Center down in San Antonio, but I work up here a bunch, and I, I partner with Asal. So we offer business counseling and small business um, access to capital. 
Uh, I'm Asal Shrikethi, the loan officer and running everything here in Austin, the area, and I'll be very happy to talk to you if you have any questions. We provide very small loans to very small businesses and larger loans to larger organizations. So uh, come by and uh, talk to me, please. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And I uh, just wanted to go through a few announcements. I'm going to really try to blow through this because I know we're running late. Uh, we opened two new Pure River Coffee chapters, which was kind of monumental for us since we just started 12 months ago. Uh, and we have one in Houston now. And we also opened up one in Orange County. There is no rhyme or reason for that. It's just that, you know, I, I happen to know some people in both locations, and they were very excited about starting a Pure River Coffee uh, chapter down there. So we're really excited about bringing them on. and what that means for uh, small business entrepreneurs and uh, getting connected to the news media because that's ultimately what Pierre Ever Coffee is about. It's, it's about introducing you to news media professionals like these wonderful ladies, uh, people that uh, if you want to reach news anchors, uh, editors of, of influential newspapers or business journals, we bring them in every month for uh, a meeting and they, they stand up and they talk to you about what kind of news they're looking for, do's and don'ts, um, you know, just ways to reach out and, and contact them with your story. Uh, so we are all about facilitating that connection. Okay. And uh, we, we did recently launch a PR strategy group for small business where we, we have a small group of about five entrepreneurs. We meet twice a month for 90 minutes and we just go over PR strategy. Uh, it's more of a DIY approach to, to PR, uh, but what we do provide are a lot of Great ideas, brainstormed together as a group, uh, directed by myself and, and other PR professionals. Plus, we, we also hold you accountable. We ask you, did you do anything about your PR? Because sometimes you just got to think about it and get focused in order to actually execute a PR strategy. Okay. And also, I mentioned uh, My Local Reporter, that we have thousands of reporters in Texas. Uh, and if you go to mylocalreporter.com, you can check that out at your convenience. Uh, February's PR over coffee is going to feature Sandra Zaragoza, who is a reporter for the Austin Business Journal. She covers healthcare, higher education, and uh, creative arts, creative industries. So marketing, advertising, uh, you name it, uh, she covers it. Plus, you know, I, uh, there's a little bit of spillage. Uh, you know, if you have a great idea and you feel like she needs to know about it, you know, she's the person you want to kind of talk to. Uh, she's fabulous. Uh, it's the first time we've ever had her, and we're very excited. And that's going to be February 14th, uh, back at our normal uh, location, which is the Better Business Bureau, and that's right off of uh, I-35 and 290 behind Papa Do's Restaurant. Okay? And so we have our Food Writers Roundup, and I'm um, very excited to welcome Addie Broyles, uh, who is a food writer and blogger at, at Austin American Statesman, statesman.com, and Austin 360. We have Marla Camp over here to our left, and she is the publisher of Edible Austin. We also have Patricia Sharp, who is the executive editor and food writer at Texas Monthly. And I uh, wanted to mention, uh, you know, we were talking about the rain, Addie and I were talking about the rain very early on, and, and she said, you know, the last time that I remember a big rain event happening was, was when you had your second son. Your second son, yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's been that long. It's been 18 months <laughs> since we had that big storm where we had like nine or ten inches in one day. Well, we hit five <laughs> inches today, which is pretty significant. Uh, but I'm really thankful to all of you for making it out despite the weather. It's, it says a lot about, uh, you know, these wonderful ladies that we have here today. Um, so really quickly, I just wanted to uh, mention something about Addie that I read your uh, brief bio on three, Austin 360. It says that you hail from the Ozarks, uh, but you refined your cooking techniques on the West Coast and in Spain. Yes. And that's a conversation for another day. I'd love to hear more about that. Uh, you're here in Austin, of course, and, uh, and what I've noticed is that in, in a very short period of time, uh, she's managed to create a huge following as a food writer and a blogger. Uh, in fact, uh, I believe Troy Beza said that she really leads the pack uh, of food bloggers out there uh, in, in terms of scope and influence and following. Uh, she regularly appears on TV as uh, a resource for all things related to food, and tell me, did you Start your kale, are you, did that thing no, get started? No, no, that's no. all in, uh, I know, limbo. Almost. <laughs> well, you know, I think we should all call kale, are you, today and say, what is up? Um, so, 
welcome Addie Broyles. Uh, Marla Camp, uh, you are a journalist, I've, I've realized, and, and an artist and a food enthusiast. Uh, you launched out of Boston in 2007, correct? Uh, and it's a quarterly publication that celebrates local fresh food in season. Uh, you, connect the, you connect your readers to local food growers, producers, artisans, and, and traditions in Central Texas, and boy does she. Uh, her magazine is fabulous. Uh, she was also recently appointed uh, by the Austin City Council to the Sustainable Food Policy Board that she helped uh, create as an advisory body to the city and county governments. Bottom line, she's very influential in this community from a, a food perspective and a civic perspective. So it's a real honor to have Marla here today. Uh, Patricia Sharp um, goes by Pat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Joined the staff at Texas Monthly in 1974, two years into uh, when it was started, correct? And you did a lot of, you edited a lot of the cultural and food related uh, art, you know, articles and submissions there, but uh, gradually you began to focus more and more on food. So I, I you know, I think that's uh, very interesting. I think I would have done the same thing if I were you. Uh, but, you know. It's worked out real well. But if you wonder, if you wonder, what, you know, how by focusing so much on food, she's remained so thin, I highly recommend reading her book called. It's a, it's a, it's called, just a, just a story. It's a story. It's a story called Skinny Bitch. <laughs> I love that. Uh, fantastic. And, and it won a James Beard uh, Award for magazine food writing. So, you know, enough said. Uh, she, you know. She knows the food scene of Austin and all of Texas. Uh, she's plugged in, uh, you know, all over the state. So, you know, again, really honored to have Pat Sharp join us as well. Um, I believe that's enough of me talking. What I want to do is open this up to all of you because, you know, we're here. We want to we want to know about what your concerns are, what your uh, interests are um, from a media outreach perspective. Uh, they're here. They would love to entertain your questions about uh, anything under the sun, really. You know, what, what brought them into uh, the food trade as, as, a, as a writer? Or, you know, what kind of stories do they look for? And what's, um, you know, how, how best to get, a, get in touch with them if you have really good breaking news about you know, food-related topics. So we're, we're here just to have an open forum and learn as much as we possibly can. Then, of course, afterward, mm -hmm. We're here to uh, stuff ourselves on some really good hors d'oeuvres <laughs> that the kind chefs and chefs in training here at the Art Institute have prepared for us. So um, I don't want us to rush through this so that we can go eat. <laughs> I know you're all hungry and I'm hearing some growling stomachs. Uh, so please enjoy this uh, chance to talk directly with these wonderful food writers and ladies of Austin. So I'll open it up to questions and... Uh, um, you know, we'll just don't ask us where our favorite restaurant is. Yes, <laughs> that's all for us for now. Uh, we we. You know, I don't. Do you all tweet? Oh yes. You do. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's. Okay, Eddie, what is yours? Broyles A. So it's. So while he's writing that. B R O Y L E S A. B R O Y L E S A. When he said at the beginning um, something about if social media, you know, if you're doing social media, it's not an if at this point. And, and I hope that that's not a surprise or a shock or, or something that scares you because um, it's something that you can start slowly and you start with one thing. Say you start with one Twitter handle and then you maybe go into Facebook or you go and you start a blog on your website or something like that. But I mean, that's. In my mind, the single biggest thing that you can do as a business owner or as a writer or, or you know, somebody who's trying to make your way in the food world is to have a presence in these social media spheres, especially in Austin. Austin is more of a Twitter town than, than most cities. I mean, I think some cities sort of lean more toward Facebook, but um, you, know, it's a, you have to be on Twitter to be engaging not only with your customers, but with the people who will be potentially writing about you. So my first biggest piece of advice. <laughs> Great. You get all of them? Edible? Yes, I do. Okay, so it's A Broyles, B R O B R O Y L E S. Yeah, you got it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's A Broyles, not No, 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 you're right. It's Broyles right, A. Okay. Right. I said at. At TM Food, so that's T as in Tom, or Texas Monthly, food, and then at Edible Austin, all one word. Okay? So. All right, you had a question over here. Go ahead. Yes. Hi, I'm Martha, and I just wondered uh, if we had a product or an event or anything that we wanted to to pitch to you guys, what way do you prefer to receive the material? A short email, a full press release, what are your pet peeves? What do we not do? 
Why don't we just go one, two, three? There we go. Uh, I like that. Email, uh, short, a short email with a release attached is probably my preferred way. And um, ideally, maybe we'll have some sort of relationship on Twitter or, or even just that we've met in real life or something. So you can email me and it's not sort of a cold call. Yeah. I, I would say the same thing. Uh, don't, you know, I hardly ever keep press kits. I never look at CDs mm -hmm. when they're attached, so I don't bother to make a CD. Just a really short, get to the point. Um, I would say, uh, look at the magazine to see what, you know, we do in the way of food that's different from what Marla does or what Addie does. That's because, you know, we're obviously a statewide publication, so we're, we're not able to zero in with as much of a laser focus on the Austin scene as say either one of these publications would. Uh, email, uh, definitely email. Um, with a media release attached is fine. If it's specifically an event, a calendar event, because we publish quarterly, or actually five times a year, but basically you can think of us as a quarterly publication. Uh, we, we need a lot of lead time, so if you have an event coming up, you might want to send that to us for publishing on our, on our website rather than in print. So I guess keeping in mind our print schedule, uh, we work really far ahead of time. And um, even farther ahead of time, I think. Than <laughs> I, well, I think you do, yeah. Like we're working, yeah. depending on whether it's a story or just an issue of the magazine, it's anywhere from two months out, and you're, and you're more than that. Um, and the other, the other thing is we don't do restaurant reviews. So I just want to throw that out, that we don't do <laughs> restaurant reviews. We don't do openings and closings. That's covered extremely well by our, our daily media and our, and our weekly and, and uh, our monthly. So we really focus on more uh, feature stories and newsy things that are uh, of relevance to our content schedule and calendar.